wonderful world where everything is free, everything is open and everything is fine, but the thing is that not all institutions tend to be on the same level and maybe not in the same, let's say, um, at the same phase in their developments. So to give you an example, I mean, the library and the archive are obviously very, very high up in that process because they hire the European residents. But when I talked, um, when I gave a presentation to the um, Institute of Art Documentation, the RKD, um, they were pretty hostile, you know, it was like, uh, what they basically said is like, yes, well, the thing is they have probably the best documentation on artists and on paintings 
uh, that there is in the Netherlands, and it's actually it's not it's all it's not only usable for uh, uh, for Dutch purposes. Lots of it is very useful, you know, internationally. Um, and already a lot of it has been imported to Wikidata. So people are using their identifiers from Wikidata. Um, and the main thing is they have loads of reproductions, because what they do is they bottom up all of them. So what happens is that Wikipedians think, oh, this is unfortunate, and they cut up the watermark, making a low-resolution image even worse. So that's like, so I said to them, like, okay, you know, guys, I mean, people are using your data, you know, you have property in Wikidata without having done any effort to it. So your work is already being used, you're already a part of the community, even though you don't know it. And you know, a few with a few people this really resonated, like, yeah, you're completely right, but of course, there are lots of people that say, yeah, you know, if we don't do watermarks, we don't earn money, and we can, you know, we know for sure there is this business model where we can sell high resolution images of third domain uh, works and we can get loads of money, we don't have to fire our people because obviously the the, 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 um, the subsidies are, are, are lowering here. Um, so it's like what I noticed now is that at this conference, this talk I gave like one year ago. And you know, I didn't hear anything, but like a week back, somebody was like, "Yeah, you know, Wikidata, wonderful. I will come to your conference." So we had somebody from the from this this institution for uh, two days at this conference, and he was like really enthusiastic. After two days, like, "Oh, this is awesome. We should do this." You know. So, but obviously, this is not something. So it took over a year before somebody came over and said, "Like, yeah, you know, actually, Wikipedia isn't that bad. It's it's it, it's cool." So the same, the same is in the archival field. Um, where uh, we're discussing uh, big Dutch strategies uh, of hubs and junctions and things like that, and uh, well, that the conversation has been taking over, has been taking place, I think, in several years. And uh, recently, I noticed that for the first time uh, there was also the mentioning of Wikipedia as a uh, something like a uh, bottom-up uh, strategy for. Uh, uh, for using uh, the, the, the big media and the big medias uh, for uh, uh, donating content, but more for making context, uh, putting extra context on their on their collections. And well, it took some years. <laughs> it took Wikipedia in residency and 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 uh, some investors from the institution to get this between between the ears. One one thing I picked up from the conversation yesterday was to personalize it. And I think what you guys both did, yeah. you gave it a bit of face. And I think that helps a lot to stimulate the development you, you mentioned. If not, it's a technical thing coming from outside and you should be afraid of it because it eats you. Uh, you gave it a human face and you, you kept on explaining and, and showing your passion for it. So the investor, I think, is, is very important. Yeah, so, and, and I think it's just, you know, it's really good to realize that it can take a long time. It's not, yeah. I mean, we all, you know, I mean, the thing is, everybody who writes Wikipedia is very pragmatic and it's okay. You know, I can write an article, I can write it now, and it's done, you know, in an hour. And this is, well, and even though, you know, I, I, I as a Wikipedia resident, I got quite frustrated at times because, you know, the archive and library are pretty, you know, old institutions have been existing for hundreds of years. You know, people like to discuss, people like to write, you know, uh, 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 a long, uh, 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 you know, um, task force report and stuff like that, which is, I think, no, God, let's just, you know, do something. But that's not how it, how it, how it goes. And even though you would want, you know, that, that, that like, that, that pragmatic um, uh, attitude to be taken over, it's not something you can force upon. So you need to, you know, slowly hurt them in the right direction. You call it a pilot. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> called the pilot experiment, you know, you can find some, some proper words, you know. I think, I think also, I mean, that experience, I think, is shared, but on a much um, more rudimentary basis in the Global South. I think that, um, to a certain extent, some digitization has not existed at all. So it would be actually part of, you know, to a certain extent, some of the Wikipedians and residents who go and work with the institutions are doing from the very beginning. So it's really important that they get that whole, that they get all the metadata right, that they, they are instructed in wiki data, that they have all of those, the tools, as well as the, 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 um, the persuasion material, <laughs> to, so that they can actually um, contribute right from the beginning. So when they're digitizing, they're digitizing for Wikipedia as well as for their own themselves. Um, I think there's a, obviously you guys have a luxury that a lot of stuff is already digitized, which, you know, um, but it would be great, yeah, anyway, so I think that's a next to think about. I think um
speaking from the perspective of a Glen, um, I wouldn't go into the conversation and say, we need to do something with Wikipedia. I would go into the conversation and say, we've got a digital engagement strategy. <coughs> We're interested in figuring out how we can do our business in all these other online spaces. And of course, you know, Wikipedia is the biggest, so we better have a look at what the potential is there and kind of frame it up in the bigger context of what the GLAMs are actually trying to do because all of us are trying to figure out if we're not about people physically walking in to our buildings, what are we and how do we, how do we transform ourselves into something that is relevant and that people will continue to fund <laughs> online. So um, definitely digital engagement is a, it's kind of a buzz word for people to be thinking about. I would encourage you to kind of include that in your conversation um, and maybe ask, ask the question first, ask them what they're already doing, what are they doing with other things like so other social media tools and that kind of thing and are they, have they even considered the potential, um, I think that there's a lot more that Wikipedia has got to offer than any of the other social media tools that GLAMs are currently um, using and I, I say that as someone who spent two years piloting a variety of them for our library and um, coming back time and again to we we actually did two working groups of staff through Wikipedia skills because we could see that there was so much more benefit there and so much more impact that we could, could make and we weren't so worried about um, showcasing our institution we were much more interested in making it easier for people to find the resources that we held so you know, that was where we were coming from have you been able to quantify those experiences at all? So the various social platforms that you piloted and then the actual impact or the actual feedback or whatever it is. What we did was um, work packages where we would um, a group of staff work on one tool and um, then we would evaluate it at the end of 12 weeks and then continue to evaluate it on, ongoing, on an ongoing basis. Generally with social media stuff it has a slow burn. So after 12 weeks you don't see much. You've really got to look out to about six months before you start to see whether you're getting any kind of really big reach or impact. Not the case, of course, with um, Wikipedia. One of the things, though, we did find was that people within our institution had trouble believing the numbers. Um, there's an article about the First Fleet, which is the you know, first ships that bring the convicts to Australia. So every kid studies it at school, absolutely every kid. And um, it gets 30 to 40,000 hits a month. And when you say that to the people at work, they're like, what? <laughs> we got that many people through the door at the library, <laughs> the place would explode. Um, so they do have any difficulty with the scale, I think, of the numbers. Did you go in the social media? We've all stuck. Other ideas. What about the global south? I mean, how how do we how do we reach out and make a difference? I had I had the idea that the last few days, but I I have absolutely no background in Global South or anything. But what you are saying, I love, for instance, the fact that uh, Global South institutions now can digitize and at the same time digitize for for Wikipedia for Wikimedia projects. Maybe that's also a, a fantastic opportunity because we are really big. Mm -hmm. We might be able to attract funding to us to help Global South institutions to get their collections out there. And I, I'm totally into Wikidata, and I, sometimes I think, can Wikidata not be used as a very cheap, if not free, backend for institutions who don't have collection management systems yet? It would have yeah, been yeah, that might be a, 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 a direction of thought. <laughs> or a <laughs> patronizing for me to see. It's, uh, it's a little poor for uh, collection management, but yeah. I've had similar thoughts regarding managing the shared objects between institutions, especially in a 
like world country like Bulgaria, for example, rather than every museum having to do their own thesaurus in Portland, Bulgaria, is that you just need the policy in Wikipedia. If they can afford it, make articles to missing people. If not, they just make the key data items for missing people and use their channel. I think also, I mean, in our experience, um, they're, you know, they're scared of, not necessarily scared of new technologies, but kind of um, scared of the implications. And a lot of the, the museums, uh, the museum and the heritage territories are government-based or, or are government-funded. So there's a, a lot of kind of, um, it, uh, heritage has become very, um, very politicized. So I think it's also about, there's a fear about having too much, you know, getting their head too much above the radar and all of those kind of things. But I do, there is also, I think it would also help if collaborators within the GLAM movement maybe adopted, you know, so it's very different to have a Wikipedian from Malawi, say, walk in and go, I've got a great idea for you. Yeah. But if you have somebody, say, from the National Archives of, um, of the Netherlands going, contacting them and saying, you know, Michael's going to come in and he's going to talk to you about a great project that we had so much success with. It's a completely different conversation. You know, so to have that kind of endorsement that's already, and when we say things like, okay, you have X amount of properties in, in this building, um, at the Troppen Museum, they put up X amount and it increased their, you know, visibility by so and so. It's again, it's kind of like way out of their realm of reference, you know, to a certain extent. Those numbers are just like, but we have, you know, we have two buses of school children every month and we have, that's kind of, you know, so it's, and I think that there could also be, once you have that digital material on, <coughs> online, there could be collaborations between institutions. So that the work that the Troppen Museum has put online, you could actually say to um, somebody who's from, um, Indonesia, one of the, the um, so we could act as facilitators to a certain extent. So you would go, look at this information from Indonesia about the, you know, that's on the Tropen Museum. How can you have, pull in a, an exhibition that in some way argues with this or in some way contrasts with it? So there could be curatorial er, er, elements that could happen from a collaboration, but once everything, you know, and similarly from, from, um, from, from the Global North, you could pull in um, items and kind of contemporary uh, visions of, of the same thing. You know? So there, there could be a whole load of different applications that could come out, but it, it would be great if there was some kind of collaboration from the beginning, you know, so that, so that the facilitation is not just based on national, national on one-on-one, -on -one, it's more across a range, so it becomes like a bigger network. Actually, strategically, <clears throat> there's one interesting point from uh, in this, uh, because for example, in Finland, there's uh, this uh, aggregator system, uh, Finna, which is uh, not parallel, but a kind of national uh, port, port to Europeana. And uh, I think uh, one should clearly state what is the role of, uh, let's say, Wikidata or uh, Wikimedia Commons in relation to this. And this is uh, m maybe in order to maybe gain more momentum for the possibilities offered by uh, Wikimedia. And I think, I think the European uh, Wikimedia strategy must be somewhat similar. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, how, how do they coexist or how do they feed each other? Yeah. So. So. Actually, because I'm, well, I'm not super expert with the, uh, the, the Glam Wiki uh, material, <coughs> the browsing in the website, and actually it's not very clear no, it's uh, <laughs> what a GLAM could do with this initiative. Yeah. I mean, it's very much like, okay, what can you do to put stuff mm -hmm. in Wikipedia? Mm -hmm. And maybe a bunch of projects, but actually it's not really clear what, uh, what the benefits could be. And uh, even, even if that could be like non-orthodox project, actually I think I like your idea of using uh, Wikidata as a basic catalyzing tool. That could be useful for some, some situations, and with the Glamwiki toolset or the digital part, you could have a solution that uh, mm -hmm. that works well. So it's a bit like the structured data project. But, uh, yeah, uh, is there any way that we can push that, <laughs> or are we totally helpless there? Uh, I don't know. Maybe that could be an input. Uh, yeah. 
we are, des we are this, desperate uh, about yeah. from this, uh, this project. But the, the general yeah. the general thing of trying to yeah. add uh, some uh -huh. some message on the Glam Wiki page. Yes. These are the, the general things that mm -hmm. uh, cultural heritage institutions can benefit from. I mean, yeah, for, I mean, giving, for example, a more general tag to your project. So, do it by putting really Wikipedia as uh, an exploration guide uh, into a museum. So, I don't know, yeah, tagging this as extra, using Wikipedia to explore the museum, something like that, and putting that in a, in a list of good things for Glam in this, uh, this site. Mm -hmm. uh, would be already a first step because I honestly yeah, it tells me how to uh, contribute to Wikipedia and how to create a uh, user account. Uh, well, I'm, I'm always wondering if like the Glam Wiki page on outreach and everything, that's like the best medium to communicate our no, goals. No. Because, <laughs> because it's like, you know, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit of a visual designer and I also, you know, it looks very, very and <laughs> no, I mean museums are, are, are very um, visual. Yeah, uh, yeah, and like you know, things should be properly designed. There was a, a point Hi. down here. Uh, my name is Nastir. I'm from Bangladesh, and it's one of the global south countries. Mm -hmm. And the, for the last few months, I was contacted by two of the galleries. Uh, the, one of the board members uh, talked with me and asked me that if it's possible to uh, upgrade their website, and they are okay to. Uh, put their content in Wikipedia. They want to be. Uh, they have a website and they have a few hundred of uh, contemporary artists profile on their website. And their website was made maybe three or four years ago, and it's not accessible by crawlable by, by the search engines, and it's not search engine friendly. Uh, but at the same time, they want to have a uh, online archive for this data. And they said that yes, yeah, you have a Wikipedia, and you can use this information and we have to put our link back so that our site get popular. So is there any use case or is there any case studies that to uh, digitize or make an archive for an individual institute? So that maybe there, there might be a tool set. For example, uh, the Wikidata is, uh, is a good project, but, uh, but the individual archives or libraries or galleries don't want to just put their information on Wikidata and they don't have any website. So they want at their website and all this the information will be stored in their website and there will be a copy uh, back to Wikipedia. So how can we do that? It sounds so, like you're describing being able to, um, with the comments, show people how to have some categories. Uh, not, not only comments, they have images, they have the uh, written <coughs> text contents and they want their website get enriched and searchable and structured no, and he's describing IT work basically mm -hmm, yeah. helping them re rebuild, IT work. redeploy a, a better modern website yeah. in exchange for a, a donation of the content that's what he was describing consultancy mm -hmm. not in exchange but they're okay to give their content mm -hmm. and they, yeah, have, they, they like need their website yeah <laughs> I have to call it an exchange but um, um, I don't think I don't think that's a model we can formally engage in. Uh, IT that? consultancy is can not we, what we do, but I, but I think informally it could happen um, because I think we can find in our community volunteers who would be happy to, to do a simple WordPress site or CMS or whatever uh, for, for small institutions um, if, if they release their data. I think that possibly that could be, could be made to happen, but not in a formal institutional way. No, this what I'm asking is that uh, is there any structure to store the data, for example, the Wikidata. Wikidata uh, stores uh, information in a specific way, in an optimized way uh, to search and link with other websites. <coughs> so they, they, were, they are trying to have the, uh, something like that. I mean, they, they could start a, a wiki, a media wiki wiki, okay. uh, which they can do really easily in 10 minutes. Uh, and there's all sorts of, uh, you know, you can make that public access, uh, only public view, you know, there's all sorts of controls of who can do what on it and see what on it. And you could put, they can then put uh, images uh, and text up on that, you know, start pages, just like Wikipedia. And then those, uh, if they get the licenses right, those could, could then be available to be moved over, you know, mirrored on 
the actual Wikipedia. That's that's a sort of earlier on there was this point of putting the actual the, the first version of the data on Wikidata. And I don't think this would be a good idea. You, you, they always need their own website with their own collection somewhere. Like this is the this is the data we control. This is our data. We 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 can change this. We can put here incorrect information if we want to do that. They don't want to do it, but they could. And they don't want their data to be only stored on Wikipedia. They all, always want their own version. Well, I mean, I mean, the problem is basically what, what, what the, the the thing is indeed because I think it's it's a technical question, but I think it's the technical part is not as interesting. The interesting part is do you want Wikidata to be a primary source? And I think the answer to that is no. You know, I mean, one of the five pillars of Wikipedia, not Wikidata, so there might be difference, is no original search. And the problem is if you are using Wikidata, not like your own local wiki or something else, but Wikidata, the website, as a repository for your primary information, yeah. there will be a huge problem with, okay, we are one, okay, for example, we have a painter, we have found out by research his, his, his birth date, yeah. we enter the Wikidata, which is the source. We can't add a source because the source is itself, and that's like a, a I yeah, will see. Wikidata is about primary sources. Yeah, but it doesn't link anything. No, but ideally you would want that birth year sourced to that institution. Yeah, so you need to create yeah. a first source site for them yeah. and then have that stuff in there. But, yeah. but actually, actually yeah. then that would be, so that would be an example of practice which would be useful to formalize and share uh, with the community. So if, if we all agree that uh, indeed using Wikidata as the first cataloging system is not a good idea, then that's, uh, that's also something to yeah. say because actually an, an, an institution who is not familiar with that may think the same thing and say, so, okay, but well, then you would still catalog uh, off site, you would still do or off wiki, you would have the catalog but in a, an off wiki, yeah. Yeah. which but would then, then be because it has the same catalog structure, would be easily imported into but then the, the, the work The work of the, the Glam Wiki community would be to, uh, to articulate these best practices for. Yeah. Directly importing uh, from existing uh, library or museum systems into Wikidata. Yeah. And also for museums who, who still have to start with new collection management systems, on which ones are best to use that are open yeah. source, that link easily to Wikidata, and maybe even think together with developers yeah. of these systems to, yeah, to make it that, yeah, yeah. As, yeah, as, yeah. as easy and, and as logical as possible yeah, to have uh, these close links to Wikidata, to Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah that, that's actually that's that's possible in, uh, in projects. That was, well, I mean, that's not for, for Wiki, but for Europeana. We had that recently, a project called Europeana Inside, in which mm -hmm. several uh, vendors of uh, museum system uh, teamed up and they, they actually yeah. agreed on uh, exactly. just plugging better the contribution of data to Europeana. Yeah. Uh, in their own in their own yeah. system, they are yeah. One could imagine a similar setting uh, for uh, for Wikidata yeah. or the, uh, actually also uh, the uh, commons. Yeah. 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 Well, and, and the thing is, I think you know, one the, it's like you have the primary source, and then you have like the website, like the visual part to show to your visitors. And I think the the problem is most museums tend to see those as the same thing. It doesn't need to be. I mean, for example, the the way you really uh, refer from Wikidata to the primary source. Yeah. I mean, this primary source can be really low level. You know, I mean, really boring. I mean, it could be like looking. yeah, it could just be a Google Doc, for example. It could just be a static HTML page that doesn't look like something fancy. That's fine. I mean, we don't care. It's just a primary source. But you could use after that, uh, make sure the imports of the data is done to Wikidata and use that as the backend for your own website. You know, the visual part. The, Part where you lure your visitors yeah. to your museum. You, you mentioned it's a gallery of, it's like a list of yeah. people. Mm -hmm. Conceivably, you could you could uh, expose your collection via just a series of links to Reasonator pages about about those entities that you described on Wikidata, which you know would would do as a kind and, of. And right this now they have uh, HTML pages, maybe a few hundred uh, artists. Yeah, but the problem is. Uh, they are not structured. For example, some some artists have their parents' name. Some might not be. Someone has their education paragraph, and someone might not be. Yeah. So if we stand, uh, give them a standard that yes, this is the form, and you have to fill all the fields, at least most of them, then we can import them to Wikipedia or Wikidata. Yeah. There, uh, in, the, in the library community, there have been some uh, some connection with networks like uh, A4. I don't know. And again, I was, uh, I was at, uh, at the conference uh, last year there, and they, they invited me to talk about link data and, uh, and stuff like that. And there was really huge interest 
uh, from all these countries, and they were looking at me like, okay, can you help? And I was, well, I'm, I'm just your piano, and, and yeah. uh, that, that, that connects back to your, your concern how to make it a bit more global. Yeah, I think and looking, looking yeah. back on, on how Glam Wiki developed as a concept and a community of practice, um, two years ago, most of the uh, received wisdom, what is by now received wisdom, was not written down. And now we have things like Wikipedia in Residence, editathons, uh, well described, well understood. There are toolkits, there are recipes, there are metrics. Um, we, we, these, these concepts have kind of arrived or have been modeled and well understood. I think we're at the same point with Wikidata and Glam today. I mean, that's an early point. And ideally, a year from now, in the next Glam Wiki, we should be able to, to celebrate the fact that Wikidata models, Glam Wiki data models are, are now well understood and documented and here's how you do it if you, if this is your scenario and here are the tools you use and here are vocabulary issues, you know, uh, we are, I think just the moment that we're in is just uh, too early, mm -hmm. uh, but the work is ahead of us. I, I think we, we well, this should is all. Planning, so it's about to yeah, yeah. I'm saying, <laughs> I'm, it's I'm, saying that's, list. <laughs> I'm identifying this as a good piece of work for all of us to. Yeah, tackle. I really think that if we had EFL or um, ICOM or any of the, the international um, organizations that you know that link all of the museums and archives and libraries all together, then I think that would, if we had a formal partnership with them, that would be. An incredible, incredibly powerful because it wouldn't be something that was just you know by some mad guy who just walked in the street and said come let's do this you know it would be a kind of like a more formalized kind of it would take the kind of the, the weirdness out of it maybe. Well, one thing that, that I always found a little bit baffling, you know, from an open source hacker perspective is. Uh, there are so many catalog systems, you know, and virtually all of them, as far as I know, are proprietary and you know closed. Um, if you would have a few uh, glams that would come together, you know, uh, get all the money they pay every year for proprietary licenses, throw it in a big bundle, and just have a few people write an open source catalog system, you would be. There's you know. already a couple. Yeah. Yeah. Evergreen would be good. Go on. Um, that would be good to put on the libraries. glam page. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. Collection management, hit collection space, which is for the money yeah. on. And uh, collective access, mm -hmm. which is, yeah. I think, has a lot more capabilities, including you can customize it with a particular metadata scheme, DBU or VRA or CMW. Uh, but I think the future of what Wikidata is going to hold is still definitely won't be decided at this table. Um, because take, for example, the epigraphy project, Eagle. Uh, it, for them, it's a very good semantic platform for, for integrating records from many different institutions, so <coughs> descriptions. And I think they have found a simple structure that works for them. I imagine that for stone inscriptions, you keep a little less descriptive information than for paintings or other complex objects. And uh, from there, they submit to a path. But their basic, I think that they're developing more metadata on there, not just integrating data from other places. But it's a separate instance of the Wikidata software. It's not even in Wikidata. And uh, especially for the things that are of common interest, which are the main things, primarily, I think that a central system like Wikidata or Wikipedia, if, can, if the grounds can afford to make articles in there, it's an excellent choice. So linking your collections to the, if you have a painter that you, not every uh, institution has to write a biography on this painter, but they just use the, the biographies. Exactly. If it's available in the English Wikipedia, it's better. If not, it's, if it's somebody Bulgarian uh, of local interest, but important historically, they better get together and make it record. I think there would be another issue about like the artists because like what uh, happened in Hong Kong previously is like we asked these uh, people to edit the pages about the local artists, especially the female artists, because like we uh, had this event uh, during the uh, International Women's Day. So like after just a week or two weeks, uh, their page got deleted because people think that they are not notable enough. They think that the artist is not 
uh, I mean, they are not famous enough. So, like, I, I'm just wondering if we really need to like uh, have some biography about the artist, and then like, what are the criteria for us to put them on the uh, wiki pages? Like, I mean. What is the criteria? Like, why should we put this artist, uh, I mean, the biography of this artist on Wikipedia, but not the other one? Like, what, how can we, uh, uh, what, just like, what is, I mean, what's other criteria for us to use? that all information will always end up. Yeah, I mean, you have to say and problem with Commons as it only accepts free licensed content, and if you want to use it as a content repository for a glam institution, like a, <laughs> where you present yourself, uh, half of the stuff doesn't, is not allowed to go there. Could we imagine that if we have a collection and we put it in Wikidata, then uh, there is a structural requirement to have them all. Yeah, yeah. For Wikidata has a much yeah. broader notability criteria. So for instance, the Martin Dammers has been importing data from the Rijksmuseum API, and all the artists that have no Wikipedia article whatsoever anywhere, yeah. they do get added to Wikidata. Yeah. They will get the Wikipedia articles by, by being automatically created exactly. through the data. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. but you can no, 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 no. We're no, not but there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but in two years, the, no, yes. the Google Knowledge Graph will show them, yeah. even though they have no Wikipedia articles yeah, anywhere. Yeah, that's because true. They're no you can't always the same for Wikidata. You can't promise that everything completely where we did it. Somebody might decide, for, like, this one instance of the whole collection, we don't want it, and, and he might get a consensus on Wikidata, and yeah. this one instance will be deleted. Yeah. It could happen. I, I would say the future is rather in um, separate systems which are interoperable. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. so what the institution should have, uh, should be able to rule over their system. Because in, in the end, they can all say, okay, take, yeah. take whatever you want to take, but um, don't uh, delete stuff from our yeah. from our system. That's, a, that's what I am trying to say earlier. Mm -hmm. they, they want their own system and it's accessible via API yeah. or via Wikidata. Yeah. Yeah. But that, that their system should be good enough so that we can access. Otherwise, they have to build the site again and again. <coughs> so, is there any standard or can we well, make any standard <coughs> softwares or for uh, data structure? Well, there's this wiki data for research project proposal, which is still, it has to be decided upon, and there the idea is to have uh, Sparkle endpoints on the side of Wikidata, and then you can have Sparkle endpoints on the other side, have linked data, and then you can exchange, and uh, once you can exchange, so the next step would be to also be able to write back corrections, so difference management, once you, you throw your metadata into Wikidata, and it gets uh, enhanced, it gets corrected, whatever, at some point you want to take it back, and Kind of improve because you still want to be the authority source, so that means that you have to kind of deal with all the feedback that comes in, otherwise, the authority source will end up to be with the data. So, we have this for the, the Dutch monuments, they have a lot of information and they give it all to us, yeah. and we've improved a lot of it. Yeah, so, same they, they want to take this information back. Yeah. There's no really no way they, all their images on Commons got annotated with the identifiers, yeah. but they don't know the annotations themselves yet. Yeah, yeah my, my psychic powers tell me that in the other room, Sebastian was just showing how reusing material that has been enriched by Wikipedians is the end of the kind of scale of engagement for a glam. After you, you think about it and you make a plan and you release your data and you monitor how it's used, etc., actually pulling back things into your sacred catalog or, or content management system is is the end point and it's only for, shall we say, a confident glam, a savvy glam, a technologically able glam, uh, which I need to point out explicitly is light years away from the scenario that Nasser was describing. That institution is not ready for sparkle endpoints. <laughs> they don't know what they are. You can do it on a smaller scale. So. Uh, no, no, I, I'm just calling it out. This is one end of the scale. Mm -hmm. There is another end of the scale, which is, shall we say, more often the case in the Global South. They are a few years behind in terms of GLAM technology, in terms of linked data, and, and, and they also have the objective difficulties of budgeting, etc. Uh, worse than in the global north. Well, I would definitely say that, that, you know, especially on subjects like, you know, Sparkle endpoints, linked data, 
Uh, I mean, even in the global north, especially I mean, in the Netherlands, I know there are like a few, um, only the big institutions like the library, the archive, and a few other like very, very big labs are busy with it. And even they, you know, they don't always have yeah. ICT staff, you know, right, yeah. uh, in the building. And that's in the Netherlands, which is a linked data empire. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, I mean, even in the global north, it's not, you know, yeah. so I think really we should focus, try to focus first on like, you know, the small, important building blocks getting data properly into Wikidata, making sure, uh, you know, I mean, even something like if you want to export your data, CSV dumps, you know, Excel files, it's fine with me, you know, yeah. I mean, it doesn't need to be in, uh, in one of these uh, more elaborate uh, schemes uh, for an import. So, I don't know, we could use, uh, like, switch to a different topic if, you, if we need to, but I'd like to reframe the Global South discussion by calling out what is, um, uh, available and what isn't in the typical Global South Atlantic scenario. What is not available in most cases is a local community of active Wikipedians with not just the knowledge of Wikipedia but also of the technology, of all these tools, of these standards, Wikipedians who can speak both Wikipedia and GLAN. Uh, they're, they're not all that common elsewhere either, but uh, in the Global South, if there are active Wikipedians around at all, they would tend to be less uh, technologically aware and less experienced in, in this specific kind of partnership. <coughs> what they uh, need, therefore, or with the opportunity, I think, for Global North engagement with Global South plans is in supplementing that, right, is, is offering volunteers with the technical knowledge and with uh, ideas and with access to technological platforms in partnership with GLAM staff from the Global South who are at least sensitized to these opportunities, which itself, of course, is a precondition that not all institutions would meet, right? Not even see the value of, of sharing or the value of federating or, I mean, there's a lot of prep work in order to even uh, enable piloting or, or experimenting. But what I'm saying is the Global North has more access to technology and more access to tech savvy volunteers. Those volunteers could potentially crowdsource or, or develop tools or, or actually crowdsource labor, which I hinted at at my library talk. Um, you mentioned vocabulary development. Uh, if there are Global South GLAM practitioners who, who are aware of a vocabulary need or, you know, we don't have any vocabulary for our country, for our literature, whatever, <clears throat> they are aware of this, they don't have the tools or the budget or the uh, wherewithal to do this, I think we could enlist Wikipedian volunteers who would be interested in developing vocabularies with professional supervision, with a professional Glam person who is a professional at developing so vocabularies. Like, like mentors. What? Like almost yeah. like so wiki mentors. You might like glam mentors yeah. to the Wikipedia. Connect yeah. two glams, one in the north and one in the south together with the Wikipedia. Yeah, with the, with the labor provided by Wikipedia the volunteers. Because global north museums aren't, or, or, or institutions aren't themselves overflowing with manpower to, to, to create a vocabulary. <laughs> Surely not. Right? So, so I'm acknowledging that and saying that's actually something we have, we, the community of Wikipedia, do have that, the, the, the cognitive surplus, right? We have those, those volunteers who are interested and are willing to do that kind of work. Uh, no professional would accept a vocabulary built entirely by well-meaning volunteers, probably for a good reason. But with that supervision, with that advice, I think something really amazing could be done. Mm -hmm. So that's my little pitch. Uh, and do you think that institutions in the Global North, like the Drupal Museum here, could also play a role in that, like as connectors to these kind of projects? Or do you really want it to be driven by the Global South institutions? Uh, I, I think the initiative may well have to come from the north, but we need we, we, we can't foist it on anyone. We need to find yeah. partners in the global south who, like I said, are sensitized at least to the you know to the goings on, to the possibilities. Yeah. Who who would be able to sell it to their directors? You know yeah. why well, are we why are we doing this and what what's in it for us? Uh, different institutions are in different places along that road. There are already. I mean, we could bring up the pilot word. 
There are already some some glams that are already invested in donating to Wikipedia. They just haven't had the ability or the resources or the the you know the, the time investment in order to do it with considerable kind of um, breadth. So it could actually be something that we could we could pilot pretty soon as such. So um, I'd, you know, if people are willing to to an play with it and see what, see what could happen. Also, this is the case of the museum. It's um, also K E T E. It's um, like a, something that possibly a museum could actually use to their own website. It's open source and it's used in New Zealand by communities to create their own digital archive of their own stories. Um, after the Christchurch earthquakes, for example, there's a fabulous uh, Kete's the Maori word for basket. And so it was all about the community sharing their photos, their experiences, their all the details. And it may be a software that um, I mean, Koha also comes out of New Zealand originally. And um, it's again open source, but it's a full library management system. And it scales all the way up to some really big national libraries are starting to use Koha, but the original stuff is open source. Interestingly, also there is now one or two library management systems that are based on RDF, which gives a lot of flexibility of what you're going to be recording. As you mentioned, you know, the FRBR works with this or that. Mostly public libraries, I think, is the first. And they have some very good cases. So for example, a kiosk that is going to show you related works to the author. Um, just to talk about Wikidata, then, we had a, um, a full um, full data from all of the marine sites in South Africa it was um, put out as a, I think it was under Creative Commons, but it had a um, had a non-commercial attachment to it. So it was just, and we couldn't. They were happy to donate to Creative Commons, but um, to Wikidata, and have have it all pulled in, all the information. But um, but they couldn't release it because of the because of the non derivatives and it's that the, the full open license of create of, of Wikidata sometimes stymies the contribution you know because people are still worried about that even if it was share alike it would have been you know so I, I don't know I don't know if that's something that the Wikidata community maybe we we need to articulate better because it really everyone was very excited about this thing released and then we couldn't do anything about it. And it was all of the marine information for the whole South South African coast. So, you know, it but could have been. there's pros and cons to a more restrictive requirement. Mm. Europana has gone with a rather liberal requirement for license. I understand but the reason for the liberal license, but is there not a way that you could just have those ones tagged with a different licensing so that there could be a variety of licenses allowed. That's what the repanel is, but uh, now no, 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 no. Well, I don't think you can actually license the data. So I don't know when you're talking about a licensed non-derivative data, what do you what do you So essentially it's a it's a um, research organization that went around and, and did um, research into all the marine life um, on across the 3,300 kilometers of coastline of Southern Africa, and they did this full um, search, and they had all of that data, but they had that data that they had released under the CCDY, the, the organization, the research organization had released it. So when I was the one who was directly involved, I was just trying to get the license to out, but, um, but when it was released, there was like, a, let's put it on start wiki data or get it. And then I contacted somebody who's involved, and they said, no, we can't do it because of the, because it's it's slightly more restricted than than wiki data is. But then maybe there could be something. Um, it's probably not for this discussion, but it, it probably does have a, a, you know, just as that extra licensing um, discussion and the extra sell you have to do, it's hard enough to sell to share alike to to have a completely open um, you know a completely open license. I think next slide so actually maybe that so then that that's uh, that's a proof that uh, there need to be this motivation exposed uh, once again. Because yeah, actually from the perspective of running a metadata system mm. it makes life so impossible. 
to, uh, to handle different level of uh, metadata analysis mm -hmm. and it completely cripples uh, rules. No, I, I completely get it. I think the only wor worry was that they are very new in the uh, yeah. free licensing game so, and yeah. there are research institutions where they were worried that their research would not be new, you know, by rival groups and what would all come. I don't even want to get into yeah, that. Yeah, it's 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 their, their, their worries were, so... Yeah, so that, that would be then a matter of yeah, having the right pointers to... Uh, but sometimes it doesn't that. match up. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it just doesn't work. Yeah. And this might be a case where they really need the research data to be protected somehow. Well, yeah, but I think that's always tough, yes, actually, especially for research institutes now that all government funded yeah. uh, bodies are pushing for, uh, for open data. Uh, so that may also be a case of uh, mm -hmm. someone not having the, uh, the time to just give a serious no, they do. I mean, we had the Creative Commons South Africa involved with the discussion and everything. So it wasn't that they didn't have the resources to understand the licenses, oh. but they just weren't prepared to let go of the of the, the non-commercial. Of the cultural thing. So, so the Wikidata yeah, answer so was that really that. Yeah, but that, that's, that's why we should be also prepared to to give the right uh, the right. Uh, it might take a few years, but I'm just not sure that they're Yeah, yeah. I mean, Wikidata won't accommodate it uh, uh, because, no, no, as, no, no, as Antoine it. says, it's, it, it will be a huge cost for Wikidata mm -hmm. for what, in the grand scheme of things, is a small data set. Um, the Wikidata would say those concerns are probably misguided, but if yeah. they feel strongly about them, then they're not ready to yeah. release their data. No, That's absolutely. Okay. That's what happened. But I yeah. was just wondering if there was a way of compromising or... But obviously there's no... Okay! End of discussion. Let's move on. The data is available now under this license. Oh, yes, it is. So, that's an improvement. <coughs> yeah, no, absolutely, yes, but it's just it's just, just something that doesn't feed into yeah. marine information maybe, for maybe, Southern maybe, Africa. Maybe, maybe your, your let's, let's move on uh, thing is a bit, uh, is a bit quick, because actually there could be also value in uh, having the point made somewhere uh, yeah. available, explaining why Wikidata made that decision. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, obviously Wikidata is very early on, and it's, you know, so the documentation and case studies and, and why and those decisions. and. It, we were kind of, you know, it's not my project, so I, I'm not that, you know, I need to be indoctrinated. Uh, you're you're raising you know, a really good point. I mean, yeah. if you're talking with people who look at Wikidata and who say, well, that's a bunch of fanatics who are choosing open data for no other reason than their ideology, mm. then it's not good either. Mm. Oh, but, but, but the thing, of course, I mean, there are lots of, obviously, it's maybe not too well documented, but there are very good reasons why CC0 was chosen for Wikidata, and one of them was because there were alternatives beforehand, like the open database license, mm -hmm. which turned out to be it turned out to be very inconvenient to use attribution or shell likes uh, like constructions with metadata because it's just a draw. I mean, you don't want to do that. It's, it's like mm -hmm. I need to reference this good as yeah, sure, it's need a license link or something. It's, um, yeah, and even presenting data about one person in the style of Reasonator, for example, right? The, the data could come from you know 18 different sources, each with their own license restriction, and I mean you would literally have to have like reasoning systems about licensing to yeah, understand to if you are able to yeah. show this in this context, and if you are, how to attribute it. And mm. yeah, yeah. Are, are these arguments available somewhere? I was just looking and. Uh, I'm not finding them quickly, which is a bad sign. But yeah. do you, do you, can you, can you in briefly explain how it was the decision of Europea? Yeah, I guess <laughs> we also have a license page somewhere that uh, yeah, okay. I, it. Well, so <laughs> I can try to find <laughs> it. Actually, that would be a good sign as well. <laughs> well. Well, in the first place, in many European countries, uh, this type of metadata is not copyrightable. So it's, yeah, it's, not it's actually a public domain. Yeah, exactly. But there's data with, protection rights. With well, not in all countries, but in okay. some, yeah. Um, and then you may have in some fields entries which might be copyrightable in some countries. And to make it clear, just <laughs> apply the CC0 so you, you know that you can use the whole thing. Otherwise, you have, everybody has to check whether it's actually public domain. Yeah. In Europe, there's a very big push for reproducible science and open data sets and so on. And in Horizon 2020 also for open access to articles. But it also requires a change in the academic system of uh, yeah. measurement, mm -hmm. attestation, promotions, yeah. to advance. And well, there are various projects and also various uh, social networks. 
through the so yeah. research gate. So in other words, your influence is not only measured by the traditional measurements of citation content, but also by people using your data and so on. And I see a similar thing in archaeology. Uh, open context is a system from the states, but archaeologists are wary of releasing their data because they say somebody else is going to write the papers based on the data that we went out in the field and spent three years collecting. It's a bunch of reorganization of the cooperation. Yeah, I think also um, now I remember as well is that the attribution was very important to them so that the information could then be directed back to, to their work. And I think that was because it was such a huge study. That's about that for it, it was data. much more kind of, so if, if the information kind of disappeared into Wikidata, mm -hmm. they wouldn't be actually used. No, but for Wikidata, it means that we have to get much better at sourcing. The yeah. source yeah. is important. Yeah. 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 An attribution like this, like, it doesn't yeah, really so help. I mean, we want to have yeah. to source. And mm -hmm. that's really important. I think that's something we have to get across. And Inside I don't think there are any Wikidata specialists in Africa at all. So no. <laughs> I just no, think it's one of those things really, that, you know... No, but right now we really have this problem with Wikidata. There's a lot of data. We don't know where it, where it comes from. Yeah. And I see the same discussion now with open government data. Of course, each government agency would like to have their data properly sourced. Mm -hmm. It's also it's important also for the researchers. They want yeah, to so source. It's important just to know yeah, where what you're working from? with. Yeah. It could so be I think everybody yeah. has the same interest and we just mm -hmm. have to get a culture around that, that to really do it. And then mm -hmm. I think the, the whole these whole um, issues with uh, not being attributed they will vanish once yeah. it has been made clear that we have a clear culture of sourcing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the other thing I learned now, also in the hack is that, that we, for open data we're very strict. Like if you do a, an open cultural data hack, don't we, the metadata has to be like CCC or, or something like that. And my experience was that yeah, there are some partners who try to negotiate this at the beginning, but you just have to be strict. And, well, no, we're not going to take. And a lot, of, like I had several cases where they changed their mind in the process. And mm -hmm. One of them, in the last minute, like in the morning of the hackathon, they, well, the day before they came with a share-like license, something, and then we said, no, that's, if you come with this, we won't advertise it. And then they, they called the, the data owner and they said, okay, um, we'll kind of uh, release it. Yeah. Just this is kind of. Yeah. Well, I think it's also because the, the institutions don't quite really know often what it means when they say they're releasing their metadata. Oh. It just sounds really scary. And if they have the choice of share like and non-commercial yeah. right. and, and completely releasing, they would say, okay, non-commercial share like, right, right. you can have yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean. They don't really know. Well, yeah, I guess one of the things that I really took back from the uh, discussion yesterday was Alex's uh, talk about uh, you know when you have when because obviously we all want to have cooperation with plan because that's you know wonderful it's well, one of the things that we really like to do but you have to be critical and you know it's it's pretty hard to say no to somebody and say there doesn't seem to be like enough you know uh, mutual benefit yeah exactly but but I mean there are you know lots of times when you have to say no and say indeed sorry but. Your license isn't good, we are not being used. I think it's a problem at the beginning when you start um, entering corporations in a given country. Once you have several of them, you'll notice that you have so many partnerships or donations that you can't even manage them and handle them all at the time. So you automatically you will become more picky. But, but it's true, at the beginning it's, it's hard to say no, um, it's not worth it. Yeah, although but I've you also have to try them to, to see what works. But I, yeah. I think also, I mean, a lot of a lot of glams would have gotten bored if the British Library and if the Proper Museum hadn't made. You know, so it's about that kind of you you need the you need the case studies in order to show how it works. Mm -hmm. And we don't have those. I mean, as far as I know, we don't have those necessarily on wiki data. So it's very difficult to actually make the case if you don't have the case to make. So you know, so it's about. I think it's also about making sure that we have that that that. Um, so that somebody who is completely data inept in Cape, in Cape Town can say, this is the reason why. And let's do it. Let's try it. Let's release some of it and see how it works for you. You know, or something. So that it... it well, yeah, I think this is, like a, this is like a really good thing. Because, you know, I mean, many times when you have discussions with Glass, they have a feeling, or maybe you have a feeling, or you both have a feeling that 
it's all or nothing, you know? Mm. Your whole collection is free, free, free to license or nothing is free to license. Yeah. Mm. And of course, you really like, like it to be that way. But you can also say, you know, let's start small, let's have a small set. Mm. I mean, like we did with the National Archive, that we started with 1,000 images yeah. of politicians that were used on 90, I think 90% of them were used in articles after a year. And then you release like a quarter of a million. So it's like. Mm -hmm. No, they're about 50. Hold on. It's quite a high production rate. Still. It's still a good. So it's just, I mean, even if you start with like, you know, let's do yeah, collection by collection yeah. or whatever. So I do one collection. Yeah. yeah. Small. Other ideas? What are the, th I mean, Sandra's talked a little about three practical things um, at, over the conference, and I'm just wondering, has, has everyone got their own list of three practical I, I things have, I can do? A redesign of the glamour design. Are we going to do our next glamour conference? And if so, who would be interested in doing that? Maybe it's, it's time to do it totally elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should, we should maybe also rediscuss maybe the, the, the purpose we yeah. were discussing that last, yeah, 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 yeah. last night yeah. or so. True, true, true. Is it supposed to be yeah. an outreach event towards yeah. new glams or is it more like for people who are pro from the Wikimedia community who are new to glam outreach? Or what, what is it yeah. exactly the, the main target? Yeah, it, it's, it's always been mixed, I think, but it always ends up being things like this with, you know, the people who know, who are really getting into the, the details. Mm. And, uh, I don't know. I think even on this table we have uh, people who know a lot about linked data and people who are linked data curious. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, and, and that's uh, typical and, and, uh, and accept, expected in a conference like this. But it does suggest the possibility of summits or, or smaller gatherings uh, of experts from from both uh, Wikimedia and Glam sides to actually hash out some more concrete deliverables, uh, proposals, standards, tools, a hackathon, um, which would require a slightly less mixed uh, audience. Mm -hmm. Well, one question that was raised yesterday is also whether we should try more to get into established conferences of other communities, yeah, especially if we want to reach. And for other, yep. other crowds. Like having almost like a glam willy. Uh, glam willy. <laughs> <laughs> What's on Isla's mind? <laughs> a glam wiki um, aligned to. So there's a. There's a um, I think this is. Yeah, there's an Ipla conference that's no, coming. Yeah. Yeah. Or, right, yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. and and be, I wonder if some people always try to get in, in there and they're sometimes totally not interested in this. It's, uh, yeah, but I mean, it's also expensive. Well, that's yeah. a good yeah. point. Yeah. Oh, no, I've never been there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm also not sure if we can meet anyone else. You should get your museums who are already going to, yeah. to, to talk to. a bit about it. Because they also, somebody said that they listen better to the museums themselves. Yeah, well, they appear to people. It's, it's, it's very important. Music. I think the most important thing that we have right now is there are a few key persons in a few, you know, large museums that are really vocal for us, but not on the conferences that we attend. I mean, mm -hmm. people like, for example, Liz, Liz Yoma from the Rijks Museum, she is completely into open data, and she's like, you know, quite, she's quite a high, how do you call it, uh, mm -hmm. uh, a good image. Mm -hmm. So we really need to find as, you know, many people in museums, and as high as possible, that can, you know, give the same message that we are giving right now. Yeah. But after you also need to give uh, opportunities for, for these other museums which, which would be interested to get in contact personally with, with people from the communities uh, that would really speak for, for more presence on, on our side in these places. Like again, it's, uh, the same story of the, you go where the people are. You're not, you're not trying to create a platform and Everybody yeah. in, but you go with the people. Really I like was so. kind of surprised there was a conference about the national strategy for digital uh, cultural heritage. There was mm. no Wikipedia present yeah. at all. Yeah. It was open, there was mm. nobody saying Wikipedia is uh, mm. Frank went. But yeah, no, it's, it's, no, typical, no. it's typical for us that we don't know about the conferences. Mm. Uh, we don't submit to the conferences, mm. we're not invited to the conferences. Mm. So you, you always invite yourself. 
I don't. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just outside of our mindset. We're yeah. really focused on ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's not a good. But thing. we also don't have. I mean, you have to have uh, fairly expensive memberships. So there are all these organizations that no, send you all these things. Yeah. yeah I, okay, but uh, you're you're informed via your expensive memberships, where you get these newsletters. Yeah, we, we don't get it, any um, of that. <laughs> so. um, just a suggestion. Yesterday, Leah mentioned there is a glam wiki list that's a closed list and is really good for glam people to keep in touch. But it's only for glam wiki people. It's not for the rest of us who would. There is another. There is another mailing list for glams. Yeah, there are two. There's a cultural there's a cultural list and a glam wiki list. Yeah. They're both pretty <laughs> quiet. <laughs> Although they've been busy for the last like, 24 hours. Yeah. Cultural partnership. Yeah. Well, what I was going to say. Oh, yeah, there's is open glam. Get yeah. more people like yeah, on those lists. Yeah. And then we can send you information about cultural partners. There's two companies. I mean, not me, you know, I'm digital humanities in Sydney and June and July. Yes, Sydney's the digital yeah. humanities. Yeah, there's two. I, I wanted to call out that, oh, sorry. There's, there's two conferences in digital humanities that I have in my inbox, but they're not papers and presentations for in Sydney in June and July. Yeah. Um, and, and there's quite a lot of things happening like that. And yeah, I mean, but both sides can shorten that distance, right? Wikipedians could, could get a little better at kind of subscribing to some of those public lists that, that uh, echo calls for papers, and uh, those of us who are in the glam sector can can get better at sort of proactively inviting Wikipedia and making sure they know about it. Um, I wanted to call out that we we have at least two or three different uh, what what in other spaces would be called work streams or or task forces or something, and I think it would it would be helpful to 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 conceive of them as such. I mean, not just to talk about what do we do next time, but what do different groups do next time. Uh, the, the, the link data potential that has been a big theme of this whole conference um, is clearly hot, is clearly developing, clearly needs a lot more work. I think it doesn't, like, like I said, I think it doesn't help to pretend that everybody is on board that shit. You know? So we need to create a, a task force, a mailing list, whatever, uh, and those people should go to LOD, the Linked Open Data Conference, which is free by the way, um, you know, should should be more engaged in Code for Lib and all the other technical lists uh, where these things are actively hashed out. And at the same time, as you mentioned, we need uh, ambassadors, high-ranking <coughs> ambassadors within the glam world. The archivist of the United States is a big fan, uh, but may have nothing to do with link data, right? These are, again, the kind of separate profiles, separate tasks, and I'm not sure we, as a, as a comprehensive group of Glam Wiki uh, practitioners, uh, are making that distinction uh, effectively enough. I'm submitting that as a Which thought. distinction? Uh, between, you know, our, we're not all doing the same thing. You know, no. some of us are on the technical side, some of us are on the outreach and training side, some of us are on the advocacy side, mm -hmm. without even actually being involved in a project, but advocating for it during EU, Parliament stuff with you know with uh, the keynote speaker. Uh, these are these are different work streams. These are different tasks. Different capacities are called for. Different contact networks are called for. Different communication channels. Um, so I'm kind of offering the thought that maybe we want to formalize that a little bit more. Not not formalize, but to recognize it so that people can both uh, kind of self-select and self-subscribe to those bits that are more up their alley. I think there would be a little less um, confusion and a little more um, um, energy when those groups are a little more um, well defined. If, if you try to bring some of those ideas together, what you said before about some specific work um, efforts that, that had clearly set out deliverables, you might be able to have very small meetings with invited people, one Wikipedia specialist, a GLAM person, so, uh, some organisational people in order to create a specific team. So it's just a small, cheap working team with a specified deliverable. And that, that, that creates a connection between these different aspects uh, that's not expensive, I should think. Um, uh, yeah, that's definitely one, one advantage of, of creating those groups is, I mean, it's, they're not to be exclusive, they're all to yeah. be open, they're all to report to the general yeah. Glam Wiki community, but they are to be focused on what they do, which would also, from my perspective at the foundation, yeah. as funders yeah, of help. this kind of thing, 
would make it easier to fund those yeah. meetings. So if I have a clear uh, group yeah. that are known to be uh, not just Glam Wiki people, but linked open data Glam people, uh, Glam Wiki people, I have a much easier time funding their getting together uh, for a hackathon, for example. Where you know where some of us don't don't belong because we can't contribute much, mm -hmm. but in other meetings, those other people uh, would would be effective, and maybe the techies not so much. Uh, yeah, it's just a hackathon to me. As a man, it sounds like a, a, an exploration. Whereas if I was funding it, or if I was a glam person going, if it was a workshop that was designed to produce X, some clear deliverable, a list. A resource, a, a solution, something. I, I think, and you could invite a, a, by invitation to some specific land people. Very small group. It could be quite much more agile and less broad sounding than hackathon, which sounds extremely general and technical and and uh, unfocused. If it well, was, hackathons can be very focused. I know. It depends. I, I mean, yeah, we could we could convene, you know, a hackathon to address the interoperability problem of X and Y. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, we could by, do that. By now, we exactly we did this yeah. um, a couple of months back in Amsterdam. We had a, 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 a hackathon that was specifically focused on getting land data on Wikidata. So, for example, uh, the Sommerville Paintings project that Martin Dammers presented somewhere on this conference, but one of the outcomes of that specific meeting. And well, I think it's it's very very fruitful if you have you know. No hackathons tend to be tend to get quite large. Yeah, that for our community. So it's more, and, and if it was invited a glam, mm -hmm. um, quite high up glam person who was interested in this by invitation, then the outreach is, is integrated into the into the activity. So you've created a um, a, a champion by their involvement. Just if it was something perceived by the institution to be prestigious in terms of their invitation, but by invitation just one person to, to that, that might be a helpful way of they go back and disseminate or you just tell them you want them because they're clever, you know, and because they, they're important and there's not lots of them, just the by invitation. Right. I was um, interested in what you, Miley, were saying about um, the fears of the glams themselves moving forward, like what what do you do if you know people just stop coming? <laughs> and um, and I guess if there is a sort of a downward trend in actual people who go to museums, right? People seem to have less free time. People seem to rather go to a football game rather than going to a museum in their in their free time. Um, and then there's this exploration of the digital world because of your reach so suddenly increases to the entire world, but then you're only getting funded to for the reach the, on the national level. Um, and I was wondering how maybe since Wikipedia is, is always about global reach, maybe we should do something more about those, you know, we should try and learn more about the glam as, um, as, 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 uh, um, people, as Lizzie said, and not an institution, with their own personal motivations, because of course we just want to ingest content. <laughs> That's all we care about. And uh, um, ingesting content is not going to excite the glams, right? So if we're, if we're exploring the future of glam wiki partnerships, then we need to also work with them on their own fears, right? Um, and I don't think we do anything like that. Um, we're not, uh, we're, it's, I think it's, it's ironic that we talk a lot about the Tropa Museum, which, which were very early adopters of, of Wikipedia in the Netherlands, and um, some, of, some of our success stories uh, are, are based on their early uh, donations. And yet at the same time, last year, I was one of those 250 people standing in line for my free books because they were closing their library because they had no funding to keep their library open. I have this whole row of like the books of all Global South books about you know that that, that came out of their um, library and it's just you know it's just gone with four winds. And and those are the those are the fears that are actually coming out that they are not able to fund their own library and um, it, it, it's now absolutely gone. 
and it's terrifying. Right, it's, it's, I mean, it's quite, it's, it's quite old. That I think the, the biggest part of the library went to Egypt. To so it went to the global No, south. the yeah. most expensive books. There's ah. a huge, huge, huge portion of it. It's just, it's gone. Yeah. And it was a unique. It was a unique collection. collection. Yeah. Yes. It doesn't exist. Anymore. Right. So we don't talk about that. <laughs> and maybe we had a hand in that. I don't know. We did. You know? Um, I, I don't think any, anyone is responsible for, for a change that is affecting our whole industry. I think it's just what's happening in a world that becomes more digital. Um, I like what you said about the wiki source, being able to source wiki data and things like that because it, it is really quite important for institutions if they're contributing anything into the wiki space to be able to go back and at some point say here's our stuff and here's how it's being used even though it's not on our own website it's being used in other countries but we would still see that was a good thing as long as we were able to say let's see it says they got it from the state library so i think um the attribution aspect and attribution is why they put watermarks on images and make them really mm -hmm. but does it help and things like does that. the attribution actually help because i mean at the end of the day they're only yeah, getting funded for the footfall right mm -hmm. and, well, and does it increase footfall That's what, what we're trying to do though is to build the case that digital engagement is something that we can argue is valuable it's worth to our collections our services and our staff expertise so the more metrics we can demonstrate I mean, we count hits on our website, we count downloads from our d journal databases, we count all that stuff as use. But if we're able to also, equip in, a, in a similar way, count you know, the articles that contain images that we've contributed and how many times they've been viewed, I mean, that all builds that, that business case of why it's, why it's valuable and, and helps to demonstrate what a library is. Yeah. And I think it's quite reasonable to assume that this will actually happen if you look at this, all, all these open government data strategies and initiatives all across Europe. Uh, they are facing exactly this, this issue as well. They're changing their uh, business models uh, and then after they have to track the, the reuse differently and of course they will have to be able to kind of track the reuse without getting any compensation. Ever just happening on the internet. Well, we're not good about communicating that. So, for example, we were just saying that Lucy Youngsma is like at the top of the, you know, top of the ladder for us. And we need to, we need to, to, um, you know, somehow track her more and and maybe um, use her as a as a as a, as a, as a, as a stalker. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, but she's a she's a great example of someone you know that because Esther went to this this thing in in November the the Amsterdam Glam Wiki Wiki thing. Lizzie was all excited. She said, "What? What? We're getting all these thousands of hits. Nobody told me that. We have no, yeah. no little automatic feedback tool for liaison officers, right? Telling, you know, keeping them uh, saying, oh, if you click here, you can actually see the page hits. You know, nobody in the Netherlands they're actually doing that right now. Yeah, no, but working. only since uh, yeah, since November. a month. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but, but it's been there. But for it's years. the only country where they're doing it." <laughs> It would be the, the most powerful thing you could do to persuade GLAMS to, if you had a little dashboard that they can just look at and see where their mm -hmm. stuff is being used. Yeah, I mean, the sweet best thing is so far we've done it on an institution basis. So maybe the Wikipedia in residence or whatever would dig up this data for one particular institution. And now the change we're seeing in, in the Netherlands is that they're doing it like for an entire country. Like do it, do it multilaterally. Then you can also compare, and, uh, and I mean, it's, I think it's it's kind of a sign of a certain level of maturity because it just needs a few institutions involved in that. Uh, I guess one, one, one thing that really, and this is from a technical point of view, one thing that really really helps is the fact that uh, statistics uh, on Wikipedia articles and images are very below so far. It's it's pretty bad actually. I mean, mm -hmm. we are. I mean, everyone uses you know Magnus Manske's tools he wrote in his spare time. Mm -hmm. Um, and those are based on work mostly done by uh, by a Swedish volunteer, mm -hmm. and basically this uh, service has been running since 2008 and hasn't been really updated in the past. So we are basing our all all of this, you know, all of these donations, all of this money, on really you know low level, not that properly statistically correct uh, data. Uh, and the thing is, I mean, this is one thing that I really think the foundation should step in and you know fix page counts and fix statistics, but it's. 
as a long you know, political group that it's going in. Was on their group It was on the so Matrix panel that they are working on something. Yeah, but that's been what I've heard last four or five years. Yeah, so four or five years. It would be least, yeah. cool. Yeah. It would finally be it's, finished yeah. soon. It's true. Uh, it's taken a very long time, but it's also true that they are, in fact, finally working on it intensively. And um, there should be something mm -hmm. to show for it soon. I think within months. But What's that something? What? Is that something? <laughs> well, for example, that like world mobile tools? Tools? Would be nice to have mobile page, tools. Page views. Page views. Okay. Uh, kind of super powered yeah. platform for obtaining page views. Page views with desktop versus mobile. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, growth over time. Um, trending, trending uh, articles or images within a collection. All, all, everything you can kind of want from it without the privacy invading analytics part of like how old are they? Mm. But yeah, but does that work only for the future or is it also for the past? Does it cover the past? Because in the past we have, as you said, we have artifacts in the data. There is some months there's no data. And right. of course this affects the whole the graphs. The whole yeah. Like yeah. the yeah. graphs yeah. yesterday which yeah. Adam. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a bit of both. I mean uh, the, the geolocated stuff depends on the IP and we only preserve IPs for three months mm -hmm. for privacy reasons. So that won't be available. Uh, it's like a window of three months. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the rest of it, we should have. We should be able to show some historical uh, growth, etc. But as you say, there are some artifacts. There are some uh, warps in how we collected the data or how we report about the data. So. And it would also be important to actually document the artifact. Because now we're all sitting in front of the same data and we're having all the same questions: What happened in this year? Or what, what happened there? And, and, and there's so many little things. Uh, once um, I noticed that when when uh, redirects got changed on the wiki, it, it didn't count it anymore. And then if it's uh, if it's an article like Zurich, it just goes down like that. <coughs> and then you have this artifact, and you're you're just in front of artifacts, and you have no no hard data which you can really most of the planned statistics we're talking about, in my experience, is category based from comments. Um, and most of the focus, so our donation of multimedia, so we're tracking this group rather than individual images or individual Wikipedia articles. Uh, and that's a layer abstracted or two layers abstracted from page views of Wikipedia articles. We're talking number of pages of number of page views of those pages in which images from this donation have appeared. Yeah. So it's quite abstract. Europeana has several times said, can we stop developing upload software and develop metrics software, mm -hmm. reporting for the Europeana members about their appearance in Wikipedia mm -hmm. and Wikimedia. Mm -hmm. That's something much more obvious to Europeana that they can develop that is relevant to their mission. And they'd be more willing to develop in that than Commons Upload. But mm -hmm. there's there's nothing that Europeana or a third party organization can do at this point because the infrastructure underneath it is not ready yet First you need the for data. anyone else to build on top of you for more specific the use cases. Huh? It's just the, the, the foundations of <coughs> analytics don't exist for you to build glam specific cute things on top. Well, speaking of plan specific cute things, we do count the incoming traffic to all our non sources from Wikipedia as one of our own internal metrics. So I think you'll find many of the GLAMs are doing that now and looking at you know how much impact the more we put out there drives yeah. in. Well, my conclusion is that that impact is quite quite low because uh, it's 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 a whole different world. People tend to look at Wikipedia and don't Look at, uh, there was always in our own institution the hope that if you would found other platforms that would lure our uh, visitors inside, and our conclusion is that we're not incentive we're doing that, but the, the big uh, numbers aren't being lured inside. And you have like, I mean, you have four years of, of yeah. like data to build, yeah. right? Yeah. No, 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 I see it on, a, on an occasional base, and that's fun. That now and then, uh, I think two, three times a week. Someone uh, writes an email and says, "Well, can I use uh, that image? W w what I found on on on, on Wikipedia? And that's that's fun and it's fine, but it's 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 peanuts and compared to our other, uh, it's it's quite low." 
Is it also not skewed by the fact that a lot of people read that first introduction on Wikipedia when they've Googled? And so then click on the, the site directly. So it would probably be, the introduction would have been Wikipedia, but it would then, they would go to you for the, the direct link. I don't know. 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 That you have something like an endpoint where uh, the, the visitor is going to, that there's more like a cloud who's picking different sorts of information. And, and that's the shift we need to make that uh, also inside that, that we're not focusing on, we don't need to focus anymore on what's inside happening. We're literally looking at our own website as we're looking at this building. Uh, you have a gate, and how many people are passing the gate? Yeah. And it's completely irrelevant at, at this moment. It's more relevant how many visitors are going to. It's an out of building actually. Yeah, in, in my opinion, it is. Yeah, and it's take, it's taking time to to. to uh, is it, I think the main problem is if this is something that you know every, especially if you look at you know at a higher commercial level, you mm -hmm. know, parts like for example BuzzFeed or Huffington Post. They know this because people won't go to their website, they will go to Facebook or they will go to Twitter. But the thing is, of course, the, the, the people that don't know this yet are the people who pay your bill. Yeah, you know, exactly. the, the legislators. Those, you know, they still think like it's a portal, people should go there. If they aren't going there, then you're doing it wrong. Yeah, and yeah, not you're not doing enough. Exactly. Yeah. Well, some, some are starting to accept uh, the, uh, the notion of these uh, impressions on, uh, on external um, social sites. So if there was indeed a robust uh, Wikipedia impression uh, to be available, maybe that would be a strong point. Correct, and that's why it's so powerful, for example, yesterday, yes, uh, show, yes, uh, the, the impact of, of uh, our content on, uh, on, on, on Wikipedia. And that's what I noticed also inside when we <coughs> were uh, tracking what, what was happening, and we uh, found out that there was happening quite something beyond our noses, and we weren't seeing it in the first, in the first few months. That there was a huge amount of reuse uh, on Wikimedia, on Wikipedia, but there wasn't really attention. Uh, there wasn't really any uh, uh, traffic going to our own website. But uh, the notion that there is a scale, let's say monthly, we have about roughly about 100,000 visitors on our own platform, on our own website, and there is about 20 million uh, to 25 million people looking at content of ourselves on Wikipedia. Okay. Yeah. What you can also use as an argument is uh, statistics by then, for instance. I was at the Digital Engagement uh, Day mm -hmm. and then was presenting and there was this top 10 or 15 which showed no archival website at all <laughs> and the biggest uh, Wikipedia and European were up there mm -hmm. to show that uh, people are looking for content there. So we should be interested in searching behavior and we should use that as an argument too. Well, actually, there's, I've put in the uh, the GitHub the link to a presentation at the next DPLA conference uh, from the Wikipedia library people, and I believe actually in three quarters of now they are going to try to make the same kind of argumentation they are trying to make. They are unstable, and the first sentence is fairly well put. It says the root of to discovery for most students and researchers inevitably involve a Google search and then click through to Wikipedia. <laughs> and I'm saying it directly. I mean, any, uh, any argument in favor of Blam Wiki would start with that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I think one other argument is that, you know, aside from Wikipedia getting very high in Google search results, if you look at Google Images and you look at the images, I mean, nine out of ten times, you know, the images you find from archives are with media comments. So it's like you get lots of eyeballs and comments information pages. And you know what what I always try to do when I do a donation is try to somehow to uh, make sure that we get the logo as well for the organization. So we can put it next to the image like you know, this is from the National Archive, this is from the National Library. And so I mean it's a way uh, uh, yeah to get as much you know, your, 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 your brand, so to speak. Yeah, but it's about visibility and, and small things like that, uh, getting our logo in, in mm -hmm. on, online. One of the <coughs> it's a very practical thing I noticed on the Norwegian Wikipedia uh, recently. Anyone hangs out on the Norwegian Wikipedia? <laughs> <laughs> um, Daily. <laughs> Nothing else. It exists on the Wikipedia and elsewhere as well. But it's not standard used. On the Norwegian Wikipedia, it's perfectly standard for every image used in an article, it's a caption, 
and then as an extra line in a smaller font, a slightly grayer, slightly less less opaque. It says credit colon and the photographer, the photographer, oh, the or the photographer. institution, oh. mm. and that is that is manual or automatic holds from a field in Commons. Mm. And that template still exists in English Wikipedia as well, and it says used only when the photographer requires attribution, mm. which you would think every CC by We consider yeah. uh, the link to be attribution sufficient. But I've started to put that into my articles, which means you actually get a credit line. I think visible credit over here. In the article, if you look at Oslo on the Norwegian Wikipedia, which has a very funny URL, no wikipedia.org, you see? No, no, no. 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 <laughs> then you have this, uh, this, 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 this. Oh, the show. Yeah. yeah. But that, yeah, that would actually make sense. Yes. It's, like, it would, it's, 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 that's ethically. a really <laughs> different from, you know, Glam Wiki outreach, and that's becomes an advocacy yeah. thing on your own home wiki. As a policy matter, you could make that a formalized thing in the template that it automatically takes some field or whatever. But it would be kind of cool to have to for Glam Wiki to be pushing the Wikipedias to include more overt attribution in the images they use. And that's what Glam like. Yeah. <laughs> they so like. They like the attention that they're yeah. being shown and they're being credited. But do we really want to push yeah. it? I think this is it's, very it's something that you might want to do in your home language. I think it would be impossible to. I, did, I wouldn't want the headache to sell that on English Wikipedia. But uh, <laughs> yeah, Finland, yeah. maybe yeah. it would yeah. easily. Yeah. It would be yeah. worse. Yeah. Even, even on Norwegian, it's, it's, not, it's not all that pervasive. It's evil. It, it is yeah. used on Norwegian yeah. Wikipedia, but not all that pervasive. I thought it was. I, I just the random ones that I've <coughs> clicked a bunch of random articles and none of them showed it. Okay. Mm -hmm. But and, and in, in a lot of cases, I would actually make rather an argument to put the name of the of the painter or whatever, and not necessarily of the institution. Yeah. Yeah. So you could have all those kinds of. And often for the encyclopedia, if it's just an illustration, you, you have neither of them. If you want to know them, just click on the image. So. I said it's a very practical yeah. little. Yeah. Um, I, well, well, the, the photographer attribution is shown in the in the media viewer, but the institution attribution is not. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but I, I would I would argue also then that uh, through traffic is not very high. Not many people will really go to the file pages in order to find exactly. the logo. So they'll never know. Yeah. Most people will never know. That Actually, I was surprised. I've I've spoken to a lot of quote unquote readers. Mm -hmm. And I always assumed readers never knew you could click on the pictures. And I'm, I'm constantly amazed how many people click all the way through <laughs> the institution. Yeah. yeah. They do. More there, is, there is a, some, some fraction that's mm -hmm. definitely less than 50%, but there is some. Less than 50. Yeah, yeah, definitely less. I mean, obviously. but uh, And I don't remember what it is yeah. offhand, but there is some fraction that do yeah. click through. Mm -hmm. And it's true that the media viewer puts it one further click yeah. away. Yeah. Yes. The institution. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, still, so if you click, if you click an image today, you get this. Uh, Depending on whether you click on the image or the text. But I just did click on this. Or depending on the standard file. Oh, I was on our original Wikipedia, right? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we've got yeah, this almost is no time left. Was there anything right. anybody really you wants to have said in this forum or contribute to the Etherpad before we, we wrap it up? Oh, we wrap it up. I, I, would, I would say that we should somehow revisit the idea of the common resources um, and make a plan an actual plan to, to, we were discussing in the, in the GLAM, well, GLAM Europe <laughs> meeting about uh, putting the GLAM presence on Meta. Uh, yes, to, to move all of the GLAM documentation, this month in GLAM, the kind of home page of all of our documentation from where it's kind of distributed between Meta, Outreach, Commons, various Wikipedias. 
to at least move the outreach wiki documentation, this must in GLAM, onto Meta, which is is supposed to be the centralized home of documentation and media. The only reason it exists on outreach is because I was forced to put it there when I was the Wikimedia Foundation GLAM fellow. Um, and they said, you have to put an outreach because Meta is toxic. <laughs> so it should live where we, where everyone else is and yeah. put in their global documentation. Yeah. 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 Is Meta less toxic now? <laughs> Has it been deemed toxic? Just ignore the toxic stuff. It's, uh, Why is it toxic? It's, it's, it's not. not. That's, it's actually, that's the foundation being toxic. Uh, well, I, oh, oh, it's not at all. Maybe that's for one of our new working groups to get. Mm, okay. Yeah. And also, I was thinking about the the structured ways of modeling these events. I don't know whether we used them, <laughs> whether they have been used as in the evaluation, but whether they are used so much in the design. Oh, that's that's just me. Uh, the, the models, or like how 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 standardized the the um, GLAM cooperation models or ways should be, and how facilitating they should be through common resources. Like, should there be templates? Or uh, uh, my understanding is that we we've produced kind of at least two different things. One was like case studies, models, things that are suggested, that are identified best practices, but that are not the way you need to do this. Alongside a few, a very few um, statements that Glam Wiki practitioners did consider to be core, like the Wikipedia in residence should not do paid editing, you know, on behalf of the institute where they are, seem to be a principle, not just suggestions. Mm. Uh, so there were a few principles like that, but I don't know that they're very well kind of um, differentiated from the, the models and case studies. But the models and case studies are, are just that. I think it's okay to improvise, to um, custom, customize, tailor, make, make it your own. It would be nice if people gave back in, in the sense that if you did have a project and it was not one of the classic cases that you documented, for others, which we should, we could get better at. So in revisiting the common resources, would we also be putting together that list of open source tools that could be useful to people yeah. who are asked questions like you were by the GLAM yeah. that want some, some advice about, you know, it's not going to uh, be I'm, any solution. I'm more interested in uh, contributing to Wikipedia than digitize or make it available. So even some uh, some organization might not donate all their contents in Wikipedia, but we can use their reference, uh, which are but they are not available in their head. So mm -hmm. that's the point. And if there are several organizations who are in, show their interest to release their contents in Wikipedia and Commons, but they don't have any proper structure uh, of content, uh, the text content and the images. For, for example, I have an image. For, for the institute has the image. But the other metadata is not available. So which metadata should have um, be included with that image? They don't know. They might not don't know. Are you talking about big institutions with a lot of uh, images? Or yes. Small? Okay. I I have contacted with few organizations. Uh, so in, in our country there is a in a is a museum. It's a liberation war museum. They have the largest content okay. of our liberation war. And they are more or less okay. I have, I had one meeting with them, and they said yes, primarily we are okay, but we have to sit with the uh, full board. And after, when I go back to my country, then within within a week I can arrange a meeting. But they don't have any. That large museum is lacking metadata about its holdings. Is that what you're saying? Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the uh, what are the standards they are following. I, I, as far as I know, that there is more only few of the information there. Uh, store are available uh, in digital version, mm -hmm. and most of them are not. So if they want to <coughs> initiate a project, digitize all the information for their own purpose, uh, and with, if I can add a structure for our our purposes to get the information yeah. as a reference, I mean, at least as a reference, and we can motivate because it's government organization and they, it's a museum. So it's, the primary goal is to inform others. 
That's a challenge not only in the global That's south. Right. Yeah. But should any of the um, precedents and solutions and resources be separated from yeah. the learning and evaluation um, portal where they're actually actively trying to collect um, learning patterns and if it should this be separate because that's where they're actually spending a lot of effort trying to get um, any precedents, case studies, solutions, common problems, frequently asked questions, all of this and they're attending here and they're taking a lot of notes and they're trying to get um, the questions that are constantly asked there. I'm just a bit worried whether, I don't know if it's a good idea to have the GLAM things all separated or should they be should there be a better communication between the two because this activity is really seriously going on at the moment um, and they're at the moment in two separate places uh, but a lot of it especially training and um, approaching partners and is not restricted to GLAMs it's it's could be educational institutions, all sorts of other things. So I, I just wonder if just needs a closer liaison between the GLAM wiki people, they've come here, and the learning and evaluation people, where there's a big team working on this. I think there's a lot that needs to, I mean, if you are going to move the GLAM, Glam wiki page or oh, entity onto Meta, there's probably a lot that needs to be done in, in the reconfiguration of it. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of stuff that is required, like that needs updating. So things like Wikidata and how do you organize, <laughs> you know, the, like tutorials as to how does an institution or a Wikipedia in residence engage with that? You know, how do they, how do they make that effective? And then also separating resources up according to, you know, feedback or metrics or and yeah. having those links that involve all of those things as well so and having different resources for glams as well as and different case studies that are persuasive but also you know um, informative. yeah informative but also then then are also just evaluation you know so reports that happen regularly or yeah whatever. the point is that just needs coordinating and not uh, yeah or so, or so I think that, I mean if we are going to set up into kind of like you know class teams or kind of or an action or group or something that could be something, something like that, that for a weekend that maybe even from our own homes you know we we connect through Google oh, yeah, and yeah, we work yeah. on this together for one weekend two weekends and then we do the job I don't know yeah. Yeah. I have to ring the bell and say we're out of time <laughs> <laughs> so, but that only means that this particular opportunity for the conversation has stop and you've got plenty more to keep talking about. Thank you everybody for the <laughs> Thank you.